We end tonight's program with an update on one builder's efforts to construct modular homes that are affordable and don't produce any pollution. We first told you about John Garlow and his dream in April, just as he was beginning to build his first model unit in Montegalia County. It's a partnership with his brother, one that they call EcoStructures. As part of our series Lab 304, producer Chuck Klein updates us on their progress. Hey, everybody who grew up in West Virginia knew the phrase, waste not, want not, right? And my grandmother, she had a phrase which was, um, eat it up, wear it out, make do or do without. And, you know, this kind of West Virginia mentality has always been present in our family. My mentor, or the, the instigator behind a lot of this stuff, was, is my younger brother, Charlie, who is a big um, environmentalist and always has been. He uh, started off years ago in West Virginia trying to push the bottle bill down in Charleston. Uh, we're talking 15 years ago, but he's, he's worked with Ralph Nader. He, he worked with him for three years and was, he was called Mr. Energy in Time Magazine when he was working for Ralph Nader uh, because that was his focus, energy. And since then, he's worked for the Attorney General in this state, and then he worked, he's now working for the Environmental Protection Association. I'm Charlie Garlow. I have a day job working for the federal government, United States Environmental Protection Agency. I'm a clean air enforcement attorney. That means I sue polluters who violated the law. So you can call me a prosecutor, if you will. And I enjoy my job. It's uh, <clears throat> great to be involved in these issues. I'm personally interested in making the air cleaner and the world a better place. They had a uh, special hookup for him at the EPA for his electric car. He had one before they were making them. Well, I've been interested in energy for a long time. Coming from West Virginia, of course, there's coal around all over the place and people think about it and talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> but I've been interested in uh, solar and uh, nuclear energy for a long time. When I first got out of law school, graduated from West Virginia University Law School, I got a job with Ralph Nader working on energy for him. Environment is his major thing. He, if there's, you know, some people have one major issue, that's his major issue. Well, uh, John is a guy who's interested in quality. He's always uh, had a way of talking about, if this is not done right, I'm gonna rip it out and do it again the right way, which a lot of people would be tempted to just, you know, plaster it over, that sort of thing. He's always been interested in super insulation to try to save people money and uh, save the earth because of the environmental impact that comes from wasting energy. And he's always been interested in uh, affordable homes. And this is an opportunity for him to be able to build those sorts of homes for people who uh, might have to put up with something that was pretty run down and they can really move into a new home without having to pay, you know, $500,000 or more to get a new home. Well, I think he's got the solar hot water, which will be good for heating the interior home, but also heating the water for domestic use, your cooking or shaking a shower or whatever like that. He's going to have the solar passive energy coming through the big glass double-walled windows, which will bring in more heat in the wintertime. He'll also be able to shade that so it doesn't get too hot in the summertime, but he's also going to use the solar photovoltaic panels to uh, make the electricity for the home. So basically he's got his heat, he's got his electricity, he'll use the ground source heat pumps to make cooling in the summer, to assist with the cooling in the summer, um, and the super insulation, the energy efficiency is one of the most important parts. Yeah, we just 
put the three units uh, one on top of the other. And this is the south facing side. You can see we've got a lot of glass. We're going to be trying to get a lot of passive solar gain on this side. This is the side where the five decks go that also give us shading in the summer. But in the winter, we're hoping to suck up a lot of solar heat on this side. And uh, it's kind of neat to have it put together with a crane. It saves us a lot of time, a lot of labor, all the work we did on the ground. This is the first one. I'm excited. I think it's great. I mean, cost-wise, we're within budget, which is nice. Some of these new solar homes out there, they're $300 a square foot. This one is... Uh, going to be just competitive with normal construction. Yeah. We've got enough uh, solar power in America, sunshine hitting our country, and other countries around the world too as well do the same, which is enough power to run your industry and your homes and your businesses without having to use any coal or nuclear or other sorts of things which carry greater risks with them. Uh, we've got enough solar energy striking our country in a couple of minutes to provide all of the power for our whole country for a year. So it's an amazing amount of solar power. It's just a matter of how do we capture it. Right now we're capturing very little of it. We got all these roofs and all these houses, none of them have any solar panels. And we are in a, in a country like ours, the Saudi Arabia of wind, they say. We got enough wind power from the Dakotas down to Texas, Kansas. Remember Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? You know, we got plenty of wind out there. And we even have wind in the mountains of West Virginia and other places as well uh, in, at good strength so that you can convert that into electrical power at a uh, cost-effective uh, basis. Solar energy and wind power, clean renewable energy. And I think that's what John's gonna put on his home, his homes that he's building now. Solar energy, wind power, all the good stuff. It's the beginning of a business, a business that although manufactured here in West Virginia with our low overhead, I'm on a family farm, everything's paid for, uh, but I'm, I have the potential to reach out to this much bigger market. What do people pay for houses in D.C. or New York? They're used to paying a lot more, right? So I'm going to offer them a house at a price that they're going to think, whoo, man, I'll take three or four, you know, or whatever. It's not going to be much to them. and. Uh, we might be able to just start cranking these things out. I would like to sell 10 or 12 of these a year. The Garlows expect their modular homes to sell for between $100,000 and $200,000. That's your outlook. I'm Scott Finn. Good night.